Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again, and welcome back to the channel. Now, in this particular video, I want to talk about a peculiar data cleansing problem in Power Query. This problem is brought to you by a viewer of the YouTube channel. His name is Jose. He sent me an email just a few, I think a few weeks ago has been, and he said that he's getting crazy at a particular Excel problem and he uh, needs my help. So I opened up his Excel file and I started to look at the data that he wanted me to clean and it looked ridiculously hard to clean the data. Now, I didn't believe that it was doable, but, but once I started to put the data through Power Query and started to do a few steps, it became ridiculously easy to solve that. Now, you're going to see that data sets that probably look very hard to clean using Power Query. How can you clean messy data sets in Power Query very, very simply? Now, this particular case study may not be applicable to the exact work that you're doing, Maybe part of this is applicable, but once you understand the creative way of solving problems in Power Query or shaping up the data, this is going to be useful in some way or the other. Stick around, you're going to have fun. Let's start. All right, we are in this Excel file, and this Excel file is nothing but the attendance sheet of any particular company. Now, take a look at this data. Now, here uh, we have the month of Jan, and all of this data belongs to the month of Jan. We have the organization and the team members in the organization, let's just say that there are just three people. So there is Patricia, there is John, and there is Charles. Now, when any particular person takes a leave, it is marked with H. So on the 1st of January, all the three people were on a holiday, and that's why it has marked with an H. If there is a weekend, it's marked as gray. But if that the if on any particular day the person has actually worked, you write a number, and this number denotes that how many number of hours did the person work on that particular day. Now, once you take a look at this particular block, um, and you take a look at the label on the top, which is the month of January, you would probably be able to understand the data very, very clearly. It's nothing complicated. In case the month doesn't really have 31 days in the end, you tend to leave out the cells in the end empty, and you kind of go on with that. So H stands for holiday, uh, the gray stands for you know a weekend or maybe you know the holiday just in general for the entire organization and the number stands for how many number of hours that you tend to work in this particular data the number of employees that you have is variable so right now in the first month we had three employees then there were four employees five employees five employees and eventually there were more number of employees all right now when once i took a look at this particular data and then i read through this and then I took a look at what needs to be done in the, with this data and what shape do you want the output to look like. So take a look at the output as to how do we want to take a look at the output. So if I now go over to the goal sheet, in the goal sheet, we just should have three columns to the data. That's it. So we need to have the date. We need to have the name of the person and the attendance of that person, whether it was H, a holiday, it was a weekend, or the person actually worked on any particular day. So as simple as that. So what I want is I want this data to be combined together for all the months, row after row after row after row. And we just need to have three columns, the date, the name of the person and the attendance for the entire data set. That's all that we would want to have. Now, how are we going to kind of work around with this particular problem? If you think about this for just a moment, this is a very, very simple unpivoting problem. Please take a look. If I would have just received the Jan data, imagine that we just have one block of data, which is the month of Jan. If I would have received just that data, then the way that I would have cleaned the data is by just picking up this particular column and I say unpivot the other columns and the data would have gotten into shape. Cool. Now, but the problem is that now you not only just have the first block of data, then you have the second block of data, which is for Feb, the third block of data, which is for March, and the fourth block of data, which is for April, so on and so forth, all together in one single spreadsheet, one below the other. So a, a simple unpivoting, it's not going to work. So now let's just kind of load this data into Power Query and take a look at what transformations do we do on this particular data. Simple enough, like I promised, but that actually gets the data back in shape. Let's start with Power Query. All right, I'm in an Excel Power Query window and that's where I have loaded the data. Since the data cleansing is pretty easy, so I have solved the problem. And if you take a look at the steps that I have done, I'm sure you'll be able to understand pretty easy. Now, take a look. The first two steps are the source step, just going to that Excel file and connecting, and then I just navigate to that particular data set. Now, once you take a look at the data on the screen, you might feel that the data set has changed a bit perhaps, but it's not changed, it's the same data set. Now, if you take a look at the, the first row here, the first row tells me that what month does it belong to. 
In Excel, this was appearing like a merged cell, but it was not a merged cell. It was just centered across selection. Even if that cell would have been merged, Power Query has the ability to unmerge the cell and bring the data to the left or to the top, depending upon how the data is there. But anyways, so here we have the 1st of January. Here we have the, uh, the February data, the March data, so on and so forth. And these are the different rows underneath that. Now, these are the different days. So this is the 1st of uh, the month, the second of the month, the third of the month, the fourth of the month, so on and so forth. And if you take a look, the person uh, has taken a holiday, that's H. Uh, if that is a weekend, uh, those are null cells, which are blank cells. And then there is uh, eight for the number of hours that the person has actually worked. The formatting is missing, I understand, but that's how it appears in Power Query. Nothing to worry about, it's just the same data. Now, if you take a look at this particular data, now it might so also happen that if you're working with Excel, Excel might just also capture a lot of additional column beyond 31 columns. So if you scroll to the far right right here, you can see that we have 32 columns, one column for the name initially, and then 31 columns, one for every single day because the max number of columns can be 31 columns. There could be 31 days in a month. Now, what I'm do doing here in the, in the next step is that I'm removing columns. Since I know that this data set cannot in any condition go beyond 32 columns, one for the name and 31 days. So I'm just saying, hey, keep column one up till column number 32 and remove all the other columns that there are. Since this data is very, very structured, so I'm making some strong assumptions about which columns to keep and which columns to remove. Let's move to the next step. This step doesn't really change anything in my data model. <coughs> Not the data model, in Power Query. All right. Next, what I do is, uh, I would like to capture the value of uh, the month. So if the data belongs to the month of Jan, across the first three rows, which is Patricia, John and Charles, I would like to mark these three rows against the Jan data. This is the first, the month of January data. Then the next set of rows, which are these set of rows, I'd like to mark the data as the Feb data. And this is obviously Jan data. And the next set of rows against March data. So that's what I would like to do. How do I do that? You can see that here in this particular column, I have a date. I have a date, but sometimes I may not have a date as well. So this could be a random number. Uh, it may not be a date as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to extract uh, only uh, Jan, Feb and March from this particular column. Let's just do that. So I write a custom column and in that particular custom column, I say that in column number two, which was there on the far left that we just saw, if the value is a data type of date. So if I say that if the value dot type, value dot type is a function that tells you that the input or the value in a particular cell is what type? Is it a date? Is it a number? Is it a text? Whatever type that is. So I'm saying that if the value of this particular column number two is a date, then I'd like to receive that date. Otherwise, just give me a null. And you can see that this particular simple function gives me the first of uh, Jan, the first of Feb, the 1st of March, so on and so forth. And I get that. Now, simple enough, I can just fill this column down and I can just repeat the very value across the empty rows right here. So I can just fill down and the value gets repeated. Nothing that complicated so far. Now, once the value has repeated across all the rows, I can actually get rid of the header, which is team. And I can also get rid of the first row, which is right here. So I can just get rid of here, get rid of this, get rid of the team as well. So I apply a filter on this particular column, which is where I get rid of the null and I get rid of the word, which is team. Now I am only going to have the names of the people. So if I just go over to the next step, I filter and I say column one should not be equal to null and column one should also not be equal to the team. Very, very simple, very, very straightforward. Now you can see that we have the names and against the names, we also have the uh, marking as to which month does it belong to. So the first three months actually belong to the month of January and the next three or four belong to the month of February, so on and so forth. Now, the next thing that I would like to do is pick up these two columns, the custom column, and I would like to pick up the name column and do an unpivoting of the data. So I right click and I say that I'd like to unpivot other columns and all the other columns get unpivoted and they come back to into the row shape. So take a look. Uh, this is nothing but the column which contains the name. This is nothing but the date that we created. And against that, all of the columns have been unpivoted. And against that, you either have an H or an 8. Simple as that. Now, if you take a look at the current data, it's almost in the shape that we want it to be. 
the problem is that this entire column says that it's the 1st of January, although it's not the 1st of January. We had different, different dates against which the person was present, absent or whatever that might be. Now you can see that uh, this column is going to be very, very helpful for us because if I just happen to subtract, let's say one from here, I'm going to be reaching the 1st of January. If I happen to be subtracting, let's say one from here, uh, I'm going to be reaching uh, the 4th of January, so on and so forth. And there was a two days gap in between. So it's very easy. If I just happen to remove the word column against all of these values, I am going to get the number. And if I just subtract one from the number and convert it to a date, I should be able to get the date. Very, very simple. The next step that I do is from the attribute column, I remove the word column and I just contain the number and that's all that I do. So if I just go here, you can see that from this particular attribute column, I have replaced the word column with a null or an empty, like a string. So nothing remains. Now, with this particular column, I would like to form a date. That's what I'd like to do. So I just go right here. And in this particular step, I'm just forming a date. So you can see that. Let me just show you the custom function right here. So I create three simple variables. So the first variable is the day variable, the month variable, and the year variable. And I'm saying that the day variable is going to be created from the attribute column. So let's just take a look. So this particular column is going to define the day. And I say that, hey, please subtract one from that because second column is technically the first column, which is the first of the month because the first column was the name of the person, right? And then we have the month created right here. The month is created from this particular date, the custom date, and the year is also created from this particular date, right? So these all belong to the month of January of the year of 2021. So I pick up the date from here and I pick up the month and the year from this particular column. All right, once I have the date, month, and the year, I just simply transform that into a date, like a date. And once I get the date, uh, right? Once I get the date, now these are the valid dates against which the data is present. I just remove the columns, rename the columns, and I get the data like the way that I want it. Now, at the start of the problem, it might seem like a very difficult problem to solve, but Power Query actually makes it very, very easy to kind of shape the data, and we've been able to solve it in just a couple of steps. I could have done a lot of um, jugglery with the M language as well, but I try to keep it simple and try to use the interface as much as possible. All right, that was all about it. Uh, let me know what you think about this. Did it actually help you to build on any particular fundamentals to solve any other problem at your work in Power Query? Let me know in the comments and I'll be glad to reply to any of your questions. In the end, I'd like to give a quick shout out about my DAX and my Power Query courses. In case you're starting out with Power BI and you'd like to learn the fundamentals of data modeling, DAX and Power Query first and then move on to solving more challenging, more sophisticated problems, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be highly beneficial. Thanks so much for sticking around. It was a long one, perhaps. I don't know. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.